I moved to New York in 1988. And 36 years ago, soon after I had moved there, a fellow rabbinical student, I was there to continue my seminary studies, told me that he was going to meet a man in an very advanced stage of leukemia with little hope of recovery. It was Rosh Hashanah. The man's name was Paul Cowan. Paul became somewhat known in the Jewish world because as a writer, one of his books was called An Orphan in History. It was about his return to Judaism. His wife, Rachel, would soon become a good friend. The student was going to visit Paul the afternoon of Rosh Hashanah for one reason. Paul wanted to hear the shofar blast, and he did. It would be his last time. Why was hearing the shofar so important? I was thinking about that as I prepared my thoughts for tonight, especially as we approach Rosh Hashanah. And so I'd like to reflect on three aspects of this holiday, all beginning with why. Why do we blow the shofar? Why do we read the story of the binding of Isaac? And why are we judged? Why do we read the shofar? Like Paul Cowan, a blessed memory for many, hearing the shofar sounded on Rosh Hashanah and then again at the end of Yom Kippur is vital. Sadia Gaon, who was a great Jewish philosopher, I think the ninth century, suggested 10 different reasons why we should blow the shofar and why it should be heard. I'll share just his first two. His first reason was, and these are his words, we blow the shofar because Rosh Hashanah is the day of the creation of the world, which the Holy One, be blessed, created the world and reigned over it. Kings do the same. They have trumpets and horns blown to let it be known when the anniversary of their reign begins. And we, Sadiaga On notes in his words on Rosh Hashanah, accept the kingship, we might say sovereignty, of the Creator. The second reason he teaches for blowing the shofar is, quote, since Rosh Hashanah is the first of the ten days of tshuva, repentance, the shofar is blown to announce it's a new beginning, as though to warn, let all of us turn to Shuva. Turn now, and if you don't, you have no reason, Sadia Gaon says, to cry injustice. So in other words, the shofar is a physical reminder to be here, to be present, to stir our souls. Which takes me to my second question of why. Why would we read, chant, and study the story of the binding of Isaac? What could that possibly have to do with Rosh Hashanah? I mean, if one of the reasons we blow the shofar is to remind us that God created the world, one would think we would read the story of the creation of the world, right? That would make a heck of a lot more sense. But we don't. Instead, we read what's called Akedat Yitzhak, the binding of Isaac. So here's how this familiar episode begins. The Torah says, Sometimes afterward, God put Abraham to the test, saying to him, Abraham, and he answered, Hineni, here I am. God continues, Take your son, your favorite son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the heights that I will point out to you. In other words, offer your son as a sacrifice. Then the Torah describes how they go up to the top of the mountain, and then the Torah records the following. They arrived at the place of which God had told him. Abraham built an altar there. He laid out the wood. He bound his son Isaac. He laid him on the altar on top of the wood. He picks up the knife to slay his son. And then a messenger of God calls out to him from heaven, Avraham, Avraham, twice. And he answered the same word, Hineni, here I am. And the angel says, do not raise your hand against the boy or do anything to him. 
For now I know that you fear God since you've not withheld your son, your favored son, from me. What a curious Torah reading in general and especially on Rosh Hashanah. Did Abraham do the right thing? Did he do the wrong thing? Worthy of discussion. But why on Rosh Hashanah? There's a lot of different explanations and one that is frequently suggested is that Abraham showed such faith, so willing to do what God asked of him, that it should inspire our faith. But I have to tell you, I read recently an explanation that gave me food for thought. It's one that I'm embarrassed I had not read before, but the minute I read it, I knew I wanted to share it with you. Perhaps the most prolific commentator, Rashi, who wrote a commentary on the Bible, who wrote a commentary on the Talmud, this is what he tells us. Rashi tells us that the reason we read this part of the Torah is so that God will recall the binding of Isaac for our benefit. In other words, it should inspire God to remember how faithful Abraham was how faithful Abraham, our ancestor, was, and take this into account with judging us. After all, Rosh Hashanah is Yom Hadin, the day of judgment. So God, when you're judging us, don't forget how good Abraham was. Don't forget how faithful Abraham, our ancestor, was, and take that into account when you pronounce judgment on us. By the way, is that essentially Jewish? that we have the chutzpah to say to God, don't forget how good Abraham was. It is, by the way, quintessentially Jewish. I love that about our tradition. It makes it alive. Which takes me to the third question of why. Why does God judge us? And boy, the Holly Holiday Moxor is about, is in one's face as it might be. I'll read this and hope God willing, we'll all be reading this in just a few weeks. This is what our Moxor says. By the way, is that a great Moxor, the Stephen White Temple Moxor? Can I say that? That was put together by your clergy, led by Cantor Lutz and Rabbi Zweibach, and a whole bunch of us contributed, which it was, by the way, an exercise I had never been involved in before. But to really go through the prayer book the way we had and study it and make commentaries, and, and I'm, I'm proud of that. I think we should all be, as a community, proud of that. Anyway, shouldn't have said that, but I do. Anyway, this is what, the, uh, this is what it says. And we didn't write this part. This is sort of traditional liturgy. True, you are judge and arbiter, discerner and witness, inscribing and recording all that we have forgotten. The great shofar is sounded. The still small voice is heard. The angels, quaking with fear and trembling, declare the day of judgment is here, for even the angels will be brought to justice. Even they are not guiltless in your eyes. My friends... Court is in session, and guess who's on trial? Every single one of us. I have an attorney friend who once said to me, David, I'm paraphrasing him, if you are ever in a court, if you are ever involved in a trial, you go to sleep thinking about it, and you wake up thinking about it. Well, there's a sense of drama there, and there is a sense of drama in the heavenly courtroom. The gavel is banged, or if you will, the shofar is blasted, and we rise. The judge, God, is presiding. And yet, in this particular case, being on trial, being judged, I believe, is a blessing. It's great. Because just as we would prepare for our day in court, in the earthly court, we prepare in advance for our day in the heavenly court. We examine our life. We think about what we have done. We should think about where we want to go. How often in life are we forced to stop and think about our life in such depth it's one of the reasons I love religion. You don't find this in the secular world. There's much to be found in the secular world, but there's nowhere that I know of where you just stop. Think of Rosh Hashanah, our new year, and the secular new year, which is celebratory and fun and all those good things. But I don't think people stop and reflect on the year going back. 
Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur are God's gift to us, we are to stop, full stop. And more so, it tells us a great deal about the God that we worship. One would think, I would think, that God would make the holiest day of the year devoted to faith. And yet, as important as faith is, and it's really important, the holiest day of the year is not devoted to faith. Instead, it's devoted to thinking about how we treated our fellow human being. That God set aside the holiest day of the year to focus on our actions towards one another suggests to me that what God cares most about is how we treat each other. Goodness. And that's a God, at least I feel I can love. And here's the best news. With everything in the balance, as we enter this trial, these days we enter with optimism that God will indeed write and ultimately seal us in the book of life. But we shouldn't take it for granted. Because if there's one thing we come to realize in every coming year, we don't know what will befall us. We know there are seats in our sanctuary that were filled last year with people who sadly will not be here this year. And there were people who came last year to services who were healthy, who perhaps this year are facing difficult disease. And there were people who came to services a year ago facing difficult disease who are healthy today. We have 20 days. 20 days until the beginning of Rosh Hashanah. 20 days to contemplate. Take five minutes each day on this day of Elul to think about the past year. What areas might you wish to improve? Who do you want to approach and ask forgiveness? And then do it. Which mitzvot do you want to bring into your life or observe with more consistency? And then we can begin to do so. Are there important things in your life that you've been postponing? Someone with whom you ultimately want to reconcile? This is a good time to move ahead. I can almost virtually promise you, if we spend these days in such introspection and growth, when we hear that shofar that kicks off Rosh Hashanah, when we read the story of the binding of Isaac, Akedat Yitzhak, and we stand in synagogue and beat our chests, knowing that God is sitting on the throne of judgment, I can almost guarantee you, you will feel fortunate to be a Jew. And then, at the very end, at the very end, the very closing service of Neila, we hear that shofar blast one last time with the Kia Gedola, that final blast of the shofar, as together we enter a new year, one we hope will be filled with blessings and goodness for ourselves and those we love. Shabbat Shalom.